Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first Dad Rail stream in a long time on the London commuter route tonight starting in six minutes time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your five minute warning. The Dabrow stream will be starting in five minutes time. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready and remain seated throughout the entire stream. Starting in five minutes.
Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the Dabrow stream will be starting in just one minute. Just one minute before we start the Dabrow stream. Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are we all doing this evening? It is absolutely fantastic to be here. I have not streamed in such a long time that I haven't got a clue what I'm doing and everything's probably going to go horribly wrong. So, uh, business as usual it is then. Who have we got in the chat? Rafe the Train Spotter, great to see you. Maxwell, brilliant. Lawrence. Lawrence, you can stream along with me. That is not a problem at all. We can have a bit of a points competition going on. Um, Benjamin Ramsey. Nightbot keeping an eye on you. Raygun. Who else we got? Wraith the Train Spotter officially. Charles Rowan. Loco CL66. Good evening. Sam Brooks. Eliza and her West French Level Crossing Channel. And everybody else who I haven't mentioned. So, as always, guys, before we jump into the stream, I've got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this stream are solely my own, blah, 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 blah. May not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. You'll be pleased to hear as well. We are having all of our usual features. We will be playing... Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Got two rounds of this programmed in. The first picture is by Smack, so have your numbers at the ready uh, for a little bit later on in the stream. And hopefully, if everything works, we're going to be going in and out of the Discord server as well. Let's just check that. Well, hey, that is working. Live stream pictures page in our Discord server. Invitation link in the description below. Hey, new member. Bluegrass has become a member. Thank you very much. So, without further ado, let's jump into the game and play some Train Sim World 3. We are doing Brighton up to London and back to Brighton. So, it's going to be about, probably be a 387 Gatwick Express service back. So, it's probably going to be about a 1 hour 45 stream somewhere around there. So, we're going to jump into 1 hour for 4 1. Dynamic weather is on the 15th of January. Let's go. Let's hope this all works. It's loading, it's loading. Joseph Adams says, where have you been, Richard? Joseph, my life has been an absolute uh, mess. So a few weeks before Christmas, my mother-in-law 
fell ill. Um, for those of you who know me, uh, you'll know my wife is Portuguese. So my mother-in-law lives in Portugal. Um, so my wife, Danny, had to go to Portugal for nigh on five weeks to look after her mum. So I was single-handedly parenting four children uh, whilst working full-time on accommodated working. Um, so consequently, I had absolutely no time to stream or do absolutely anything because I was really, really full on. Um, but luckily, everything turned out pretty well. The mother-in-law uh, is, is as well as she can be now. So um, we are hopefully back to a busy streaming schedule. Right, okay, here we go. We are eight carriages. One Alpha 4, one Brighton to London, Victoria. 15.31 departure. That's a nice kind of twilighty departure time. Uh, okay, there we go. 377461 on platform number three at Brighton. Platform number three at Brighton is the only one you can access the uh, West Coastway route from, round to our left, and the Brighton Main Line, and also the East Coastway route as well. Right, let's get this train set up instead of talking. That would be a good idea. So first thing we're going to do is come and put all the safety systems in. Because I like playing with safety systems on. And then we'll get our key in. Into neutral. I'm just going to turn my speakers down because I still haven't bought myself any headphones. <laughs> Don't want you getting any feedback there. Day running. Tail lights are off. I can leave those in auto. That's force of habit because I used to drive 375s which don't have the auto feature. Um, we're on eight car train. We're going to get up out the seat and open the doors on the offside there. We are loading passengers. Right, let's check our timetable. Where are we stopping? So, Hassocks, Burgess Hill, Haywards Heath, Gatwick Airport, East Croydon, Clapham Junction and finally London, Victoria. So we should be able to do this in theory hard list because I do sign this, this line in real life. Um, only as a freight driver though, so we don't stop at stations as a freight driver. But we should be able to do this HUD list. We're, we're certainly going to give it a go. So as soon as we get going, we'll switch the HUD off and um, hope for the best. Uh... <laughs> Let's just check I've got everything else off. Objective marker off. Disable junction derail. No, we want it to derail. Stop markers off. Next signal off. Yeah, brilliant. I think that's all of them. Yeah, okay. Let's go with that. Right, wait until 15.33. So we have got 107 of you lovely people in tonight. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. If this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name is Richard and I am a freight train driver based in the southeast of England. I'm also a father to four wonderful children, which is where the Debra name comes from. Hey, Jake, so one pound. Thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. My face is too bright. Right. <laughs> I've, I've been doing a spot of decorating, and my walls are kind of a... You can see behind me, I've been doing some plastering. And building work and whatnot, so... Uh, I probably need to dim the lights down now. The walls are a lighter colour. Anyway... We will get the train moving, guys, and then I will jump into the chat and see if I can't answer some of your questions. Okie dokie. I hope this works. Okay, we've got a green. Oh. Right, we should be able to do this huddle list, so we're going to be 25 leaving Brighton. Let me know if you want the game audio up or down as well, guys. Because, like I say, I haven't streamed for a little while, so the game audio is going to kind of be all over the place. Just give you a bit of horn for levels there. Yeah, here's 25 coming out. I have to double check myself there. <laughs> Uh, DET Trains 43, why do drivers put the safety systems before the master key? So as a rule, um, bud, the, the safety systems are not normally isolated. They will always be uh, in the normal position. You only isolate a safety system if you've got a fault with it. And then there's a whole kind of um, rule book module relating to that. So as a rule, the safety systems would already be in. It's only in game that, that they're isolated to begin with. Um, yeah, so you, those safety system switches, you never normally touch those unless you've got a fault with the train. 
Sounds seem good. Excellent. Fantastic, guys. Uh, Lewis, what happened to the TV? Uh, the TV got broken um, not so long ago, and I have a new one coming on Tuesday. Uh, have things insured, guys. Especially when you have children. <laughs> That's my recommendation. Right, so we're good for 40 at the moment. We do go up to 75 in just a second. I'm sure we're 40. I was saying we're 75. No, I didn't think we were 75 till we got up the road. Okay, we'll go with it. I do know the route, I promise. We're coming round into Preston Park. So, guys, um, next stop's going to be Hassocks. Stream schedule for this week. YouTube popped up, and this is not the reason I'm streaming. The reason I'm streaming every day this week is because I have a week off of work. Um, so I'm catching up on all the streams I haven't done. Um, but YouTube actually popped up and said that this week happens to be my channel's birthday. I feel like I should have some kind of music or something cued in for that. Um, yeah, this week, ha this week happens to be my channel's uh, birthday. So 2016 I started, so what are we for? Seven years? Eight years? Something like that. Wow. Um, so... I've got a bit of a bit of a schedule plan for you. So tomorrow we're going to be jumping on to Train Sim World again. We're going to be on the Birmingham Cross City line tomorrow. Um, then I'm not sure about the rest of the days in the week. We will be doing SCR at some point this week. We're also going to be doing um, Great British Railways this week as well, which a lot of people have um, said to me about. So I, I've definitely got to try that one out. So 75 here. We're just going to shut that back. Until um, we get through Patchum Tunnel. Yeah, Great British Railways we're definitely going to be trying out this week. There is a new route coming out for Train Sim World, which you may or may not have heard about. I'm hoping this week um, I will be able to preview that. But I've, I've got absolutely no guarantee on that at the moment. But if I can preview that this week sometime, I will do. It's all down to, um, to NDAs and kind of, you know, what I can and can't show you and stuff like that. So if, I do get, if, I, if we do get the green light, then I'll be showing you that at this some point this week. Um, on Saturday night, we're going to do something a little bit different. Hey, Aston Martin fan, happy birthday, Davro. On Saturday night, we're going to do something, we can go up to 90 now. We're going to do something a little bit different. So, 8.30 Saturday night, there will be a Davro stream, a standard railway stream, as usual. And that will be the last one of the week. Not sure what that's going to be yet, but hopefully we're going to do something pretty good. But Saturday at 7 o'clock... We're going to do something that's completely not train related, but it is dad related. Now, those of you who are on the Discord server, link in the description below, may have seen occasionally it pops up on Discord that I am playing Fortnite. So, <laughs> so at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, we're going to do Dad Row Does Fortnite. I know, it's completely un railway related. This is a one off, it's not going to become a regular feature, but it'll be Dad Row Does Fortnite. Um, I don't know, I can kind of give you some links and stuff and we can all play together, hopefully, and you can absolutely thrash me because I'm useless at it. But it should be a laugh. It should be a laugh. So that's kind of the plan for the week. So all I know at the moment is Birmingham Cross City tomorrow, um, 8.30, and then I'll announce onwards from there uh, as to what we're going to be doing. So, right, what have we got? Rowan, BR is a great game. Yeah, I have, I've heard really, really good things about it. I've had a little look at it and it does look... Um, really, really good. So, yeah, looking forward to having a play on that. Okay, so we're in Clayton Tunnel. The one thing I haven't done yet is my running brake test. So, let's just put it into brake step one and check we have got some brakes. Yeah, that does appear to be slowing down. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Um, oh, no, says officially Charles. Oh, no, not Fortnite. <laughs> Sam's Autistic Cobra, if you make a post in the um, new members or member upgrade channel, um, then someone will grant you the full permission on the Discord. Um, Lemon Cloud GT, what trains do you usually drive? So, uh, the Class 66, the Class 73, 73-9s and Class 69s as well. Talking of Class 69s, did anyone go on the um, 56 Farewell Tour at the weekend? I've seen lots of pictures of that about. What do we reckon? Is it going to be a proper farewell tour or is it going to be one of these farewell but they're not really going tours? Okay, right, let's get some brakes in. We're coming up towards Hassocks.
like I say, my, bre my braking points are a little bit more random than they would be in real life because I don't sign this as a passenger driver. I'm normally whizzing through stations. Um, but it's looking like a fairly good approach. We've got an eight-car train. We're heading for the eight-car mark. Hey, LaserJet, good evening. How are you doing? DT trains, I think the 66s are boring freight trains. Yeah, they're, they're workhorses, though. They, you know, they get the job done. They do get the job done. It's going to give that a little bit of break step, too. That was coming in quite nicely there. That's, that's, not, that's not a bad approach, you know. Hitting the end of the platform at 35. We're on an eight-car train. We're looking for the eight-car mark. All the passengers have disappeared. Must be the school holidays. Where's our stop car mark? So we've got a 12. I didn't see an 8. The, so I know some of the stop car marks are missing on the Brighton main line. So we're just going to... I'm going to get a terrible score for this. We'll just stop it there. Okay, we are 8 on the 8. I'm going to go into neutral and open the doors on the left. Uh, how are we doing time-wise there? I think we're on time, you know. 15.41 on time. It's a southern service. It's on time. All views and opinions expressed in this stream are solely my own. Next stop will be Burgess Hill. So, in the meantime, why don't we play a little game? Post, Post your, your numbers, numbers now for locomotive, locomotive livery location. location. Rafe, the train spotter, what's your favourite Portuguese meal from Mumra? My favourite Portuguese meal has got to be frango asado, francis, francinha, I can't pronounce Portuguese words, so I can't pronounce any words. Francinha, frango asado, or, um, oh, I forget what it's called in Portuguese, but it's like pork and clams, which is really nice. Arthur's Transport Productions, Real Train Driver Murders 375601 should be the Fortnite stream title. <laughs> right, we're an eight-car train, we're off to Burgess Hill. Okay, locomotive location livery. If you haven't seen this game, guys, you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. I'm gonna pick the third number on my screen, which uh, is gonna be Aeronautics 237. You've got 10 seconds to give me the locomotive livery and location. I think this is going to be quite a tough one. Any thoughts, guys? Let me know. What are you thinking? Okay, I've shot off at 60, coming down towards Burgess Hill. Hey, all these trains gamers, I just subscribed. Thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. You can see Burgess Hill off in the distance there. We're just plodding along, saving energy. Ooh, Penguin, that's hard. <coughs> Go Broa, I remember you visited Fall of the Germany once, and you really like. I did indeed, yeah, fantastic place. Where do we get Fulda and Koble Koblenz, I want to say. Sorry, pronunciation's me. Terrible. Robert Schiffin, born night de Portugal. Good night, Portugal. Oh, we've got to, we've got to say pastel de nata as well, haven't we? If we're talking Portuguese food. Um, Eastern Ralph Ray says sixty six. Fifty Charles Tunbridge and a new siding. Civilian Snape, no clue. We're going to be overrunning the station. Let's get some brakes in. Luckily, we've got good brakes on the three seven seven, so we'll make that. Looks like a set of buffers. Waterloo, maybe. It's it's gonna. I think it's a little bit niche this one. Um, I'm pretty sure someone will get it though. Take that break back to step one there. We are an eight car train. We're heading for the eight car mark. Oh, we're gonna need some free. No, we're gonna have faith. No, we're not. We're gonna give it free. Two, one, one for the stop. Oh, that's bang on. That's beautiful. We are an eight-car train. We're on the eight-car mark. Doors are on the left. 
I'm taking... Oh, I can't get the camera. I'm taking that. Hey, MRI320, welcome to Devrani Subscriber. Great to have you here. Oh, we're even on time. Look at that. Uh, Rafe the Trainspot, what's Mumrail's favourite Portuguese meal? Paraco Caracoige. Um, snails, in other words. <laughs> Uh, Dabra, what happened to the Southern 73? I did hear that GB Rail Freight bought that, but I've not heard anything else about that lately. Okay, lock doors into forward. We've got no starting signal, but the next signal is green. We're still good for 90 at the moment. Our next station is going to be Haywards Heath. Let's turn the HUD off. Yeah, I, oh... Aeronautics, dad rail service going well so far. You've jinxed it, aeronautics. You, you've said that and something's bound to go wrong now you've said that. I'm, I'm going to overshoot the next station or something. Which is terrible because, like I said, I genuinely have no excuse on this route. Hey, Mr. A320. Hello, dad rail. Hello, bud. How are we doing? Eliza, the camera has a seizure. Uh, JLS plays. We are in the Southern Class 377 at the moment. Magic Killer! I've got my first mainline drive on a class 56 tomorrow. Very excited, but very no Fantastic, bud. Excellent. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, Bobby Cosford. New subscriber. Welcome to Debra. So, we're just passing through Withersfield. We've just gone over Kima Junction. Um, which I'm just about to see off in the distance. There goes round to the left. That will take you down to uh, Lewis. So you've got Plumpton, Cooksbridge, then Lewis, and then it will join up with the East Coastway route. It'd be really nice to have, I've said it before, to have that spur in the game. Then you can do, like, Eastbourne to Victoria services. Uh, railways. Does anybody think the Class 377s have really comfortable seats compared to other trains in this country? As long as you don't get the ones with the ironing board seats, they're not too bad, yeah. Uh, Leo Low, when do you set headlights to day running and night running mode? Very common question, bud, that one. Um, it's entirely down to driver discretion. There's no set time to do that. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, they're interchangeable as well. So if your day headlight fails, you can use the night one during the day. And likewise, if your night one fails, you could use the um, you could use the uh, night one during the, the day one during the night. So yeah, there's, there's no set time uh, for that at all. Right, so we're going to shut off the power. Coming up towards Hayward Heath now. There's a nice coasting board there as well. So the white diamond sign by the side of the track is a coasting board. That tells me to shut off power and start coasting at that point. It's an advisory sign only. It's not mandatory. Um, but it's there to save a bit of energy. So we can have a bit of eco-friendly driving. So I'm going to put the brake in. There's a signal just before the tunnel. Uh, I'm going to put the brake in at the AWS magnet for this signal. We'll put it into brake step... One, let's let's pick that as our breaking point. It might be a bit too bit too close actually, but there we go. Break step one. It's a bit before the magnet there. I <laughs> I lost my nerve. Haywood Heath Tunnel. We're going straight into platform number three. We are an eight car train heading for the eight car mark. Might need to drop a little bit of brake step two in. Well, that's coming in pretty nicely. We're doing 50 across the points. So if we were going into the other platforms here, the, all the crossovers here at Hayward T for 40 miles an hour, it's a nice easy one to remember. Yeah, we're going to drop a little bit of brake step two in there just to bring that in a bit quicker. Back to one. And we're looking for the 8 car mark, which is there, 3 to 9. So we're going to give it a little bit of 2. And we want to put that in the side window there. So back to 1. Release. Back to 1. That's not bad. We'll take that. So we're into neutral. We are an 8 car train. We're on the 8 car mark. Doors are on the left. Uh, Girl bro, hey Richard, what is your favourite train? Uh, favourite train to drive is the Class 73. Favourite train full stop, I don't really have one if I'm being honest. Um, 
yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't particularly have a favourite. Oh, we're running really early as well. We're a whole minute early. Post your, Post your numbers, numbers now, now for, for locomotive, locomotive livery location. location. Daytona, good question. Why isn't cruise control speed set used? So it's on here and it's operational as well on the... Um, is it operational or has it been disabled in the sim? I thought it was operational in the sim. Um, yeah, on the real trains it's been disabled. I was told the reason for that is due to energy efficient driving and the fact that drivers were driving on the speed set rather than driving the actual train. So when you're coming into stations, instead of um, using the, the power brake handle, they were just knocking the speed set down, um, which isn't a very good way of driving. It's, it's not a comfortable way of driving. It kind of de-skills the driver a little bit as well. So doors will close 30 seconds before departure. We're gonna close them now. Let's get a bit of a head start. Into forward. Check the signal, we've got a green. We're off to Gatwick Airport, we're good for 90. Eight cars, off to Gatwick. Post your numbers now for Locomotive Livery Location. No, we've done that one, wrong button. <laughs> Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay guys, Network Panda, you are the third number on my screen, number 12, we've already had that. So we're going to go officially Charles now, number 14, 10 seconds guys, locomotive livery. And <laughs> oh -ho -ho. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. I think there's a, there's a little bit to go on there. Fine boom, tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're thinking, guys. Sophie, Mrs. Time Lord, are you a fan of the sprinters? Sprinters and pacers, yeah, definitely. Love a bit, of, love a bit of sprinter action, some demu action, brilliant. So this is Copyhold Junction, ladies and gentlemen. Copyhold Junction. The line over to our far right is the non-electrified Ardingly branch. I do believe now there are some freight services on the Brighton Main Line which go down the Ardingly branch. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Um, Network Panda 73, GBRF Rowan 73, Harry's Trains Class 73, Go Brow Class 66. Arthur's Transport Productions is going 73 at Red Hill. Railways etc. says 37.8. Officially Charles 73 at Tunbridge West Yard. Trainswap from Berkshire. BR Blue 105. Uh, Social Mrs. Time Lord, 170 Sheffield. Lots of love for the 73s there. Uh, Railways is 37.9. Let's get the mandatory outside shot on the Ewes Valley Viaduct. Beautiful piece of engineering in real life. Absolutely lovely. Pig and Bob, GBRF 73. Maxwell win. Two trains are in the photo. One has not been revealed yet. Maxwell, uh, one of them's been hidden on purpose, out of frame. Otherwise, it, the whole thing gets a little bit confusing. Harry's trains. Evening, Richard. Hope you're enjoying the new year so far. Yeah, not too bad, bud. Not too bad. Stu, evening. Hope you and the family are well. It's been, it has been a long time indeed, Stu. Yeah, we're good, thank you. Not too bad at all. It's actually getting a little bit of speed up now. We can get... Uh, we can get all the way up to 90 now. So it's going to shut the power back there as we come through Balkan. We are slightly uphill through here as well, actually. So we're going to keep power notch one in um, just to keep that speed up. People too close to the edge of the platform. Hey, Raygun11589, playing SimSig but can't decide on what sim. 
Uh, my favourite was always Southampton, but I don't think that's available anymore. It's one of the older ones, but I used to really enjoy Southampton. What are your goals for the channel in 2023? Uh, just to enjoy it, bud. We are in Balkham Tunnel. This tunnel is very leaky in real life. Run out of juice now. Guys, um, someone reassure me. Is is the stream working? Because I've just it's just flagged up on oh, I forgot about the 80 coming out the tunnel. What's the Is he not eating? <laughs> Nobody saw that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, you win. It had to happen, didn't it? It had to happen. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going with broken game bluegrass because there are some sound issues on this particular route. So I'm go I'm going with the game is broken and it wasn't playing the sound correctly. I was pressing Q though. I was pressing Q. I don't know what's going on. I, I was concerned the stream had broken because it had flagged up on my screen you were offline, but it seems seems to be working. We had a perfect on time departure at Haywood Heath. It was all going so well. Guys, it, it wouldn't be a dad rouse stream without tea and biscuits with the manager, would it? Keith Jones, there still seems to be a lack of advanced speed limit warning boards in Train Sim World 3. Um, so, Keith, you only have an advanced warning board. It's called a, a Morpheus or Morpheus board. Um, if the speed limit is dropping by more than a third. If the reduction is less than a third, you don't necessarily need a warning board for it. So the 90 down to 80 there at Balkan Tunnel Junction, that you wouldn't necessarily need the board for that. More piff board, Sam, that's the one, yeah. More piff, yeah, that's the one. Ah, uh, Lawrence, the stream did freeze for five seconds. Right, okay. Good to know then. Ye old more piff board, that's the one. Free Bridges Depot. Should be absolutely teeming with 700s. Come on, Dovetail. Let's get a 700. I'd still put money on it. It will be coming. Right, we're coming up to Free Bridges proper. It's still 90 at the moment. I'm not going to miss it this time. I'll just keep hitting Q. There we go. Next stop's going to be Gatwick Airport. We are eight for the eight. Uh, Harry's Trains. Have you ever been caught out by an AWS or DSD when you've been driving a train in real life? I have a couple of times. I Never on passenger trains, Harry. I've never done it on passenger trains. But since I've been driving freight, I've had, I've had a couple of missed um, AWSs and DSDs. I think the main reason for that is that freight trains are a lot noisier, especially when you have the windows open. Um, and, and sometimes you genuinely don't hear it. So, I'm going with that. Over to our left, we have got Crawley Newtown. Or Crawley New Yard. I take freight trains in there, but I haven't done for a little while. It's been a, it's been a little while since I've been in there. So, we're just approaching Tinsley Green Junction. So from 90, I reckon the junction signal, break step one. We're still quite a way out though, aren't we, at break step? Yeah, I, I reckon that's a bit too far out. I reckon we can get a bit closer. Hey, James Hunt, welcome to Dead Around, new subscriber. I reckon we're getting the brakes in about now. I, I reckon that should, that should see us about right. I 
I would really, really like to see this route ported. Um, we're going way too fast there. I'd like to see this route ported properly into Train Sim World 3 so we get all the, um, the dynamic lighting effects and stuff like that. And the, I think that would be really, really nice. This is a lovely bit of route in real life because you get a great view of the runway. Um, if you're stuck in Gatwick sidings, you get some lovely photos of planes going over. Right, we're going to have a bit of break step three. We're not going to overrun this. We're already going to be in the manager's office when we get to Victoria for the, uh, the Miss DSD. And we're looking for the 8 car mark. Again, doesn't have an 8 car mark. He's got a 10 to 12 at the end of the platform. There are... I know, I'm making excuses. All the stop car marks in this are missing. TT trains, I would sell my organs for 700. <laughs> That's extreme. Right, we're 8 on the 8. Open the doors. Oh, come on, look at that, guys. Even, even with the drop DSD, we're still like 40 seconds early, 50 seconds early. Brilliant. That's not bad going. That's not bad going. Eliza, they don't step behind the yellow line. No, that's very realistic, Eliza. Um, yeah. <laughs> 156 Andrew. Have I seen the new Glasgow to Edinburgh route on Tracing Well Free? I am waiting in anticipation to get my hands on that route. It... It's got a lot of promise to it. It's nice to have another route up in Scotland. It's got a lot of promise to it. There's a lot of features that are going into it, which I am um, quite looking forward to seeing how they're implemented. Um, I can't say too much because I'm not 100% sure on what's been made public yet. <laughs> so I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, it, the, the thing that kind of... We've got a green, we're eight cars off to East Croydon. The thing that not necessarily worries me, but the, the thing that I'm apprehensive... Um, about with it is it's Rivet Games and Rivet Games are very very good at making things look pretty um, like the Island Line revamp it looks fantastic West Cornwall I think that looks really nice but Rivet stuff sometimes is a little bit buggy should we say so I'm I'm really really hoping that the route has got a lot of promise so it just be very, be very interesting to see how well it's been done Uh, Johnny Simulator Gaming announcements. Finally, Rivet Games released a route with official liveries. I, f I think they have the Scott Rail license because we've had the CAF cart, so that it's, it's probably been much easier because of that. Um, Sophie misses time is yet the train management system with announcements will be interesting as that's a first for Train Sim World title. <coughs> KO, will you please drive a train in Germany? I I might do a German stream at some point this week. We could do that. We could do that. Yeah, Yak Transport, the 377s do have pretty good brakes, actually. They're, they're not too bad at all. Oh, we've got a shed. Give him away. <laughs> so I'm just double-checking I haven't got my cab light turned on, because the, the light level inside the cab here definitely doesn't correspond with how dark it is outside, which is, it, it just breaks immersion a little bit for me. Um, I know it's much, much better in the, in the Train Sim World 3 add-ons, but this is, yeah, it's nice and dark outside, and the cab's just far too bright. Uh, British Film Guide, the 385s look decent. Hey, Matthew, yeah, good to be back, bud, good to be back. Um, DET Trains, I'm not entirely sure. So we're up to 90 at the moment, then we're going to drop down to um, 80 around the corner at Red Hill Tunnel, sand, the Sand Tunnel, just after Ellswood. And it's literally just for the corner, then we accelerate straight back up to 90 again. Uh, we're on a slight uphill gradient here as well. I've still got the HUD turned on, I've just realised, that's cheating. Um, so we'll get that turned off. Uh, yeah, we're on the quarry lines indeed. So yeah, we're on the up quarry at the moment, which are the fast lines. The lines over to the left of the slow lines. And we're just passing through Salford. Salford or Salford? 
depending on depending on how you want to pronounce it. Yeah, James, I've I've got a couple of AP bits and I'm quite impressed by it, but I'm I mean I'm sure as you know, train sim can become an absolute money pit. Um, which is why I'm I'm kind of picking and choosing what I buy for it and what I don't buy. Um, someone said to me the other day, I don't know how true it is, but someone said Train Sim Classic, if you buy all the add-ons, is the most expensive game on Steam. Apparently, like all the if you get all the add-ons, just the Steam ones, it's like in excess of 30 grand or something ridiculous. I, I, I can believe it, to be, to be completely honest with you, but... Yeah. So just going around towards uh, Ellswood now. The 80 starts just the other end of the platform, so it's going to drop a little bit of braking just to get it down for that. We don't want any more tea and biscuits with the manager. There's our 80. 80 at the 80. Yeah, so for those of you who are not familiar with the route, um, straight up ahead to the left takes you to Red Hill. So that line goes Red Hill, Merstham. Um, Coulston South then joins back up with this one at a place called Stokes Nest Junction. Round the corner, and there's our 90. So we get eight cars clear. Uh, we're only doing about 75, so by the time we get round there, we'll be absolutely fine. Paul Morrison, brilliant to see you back, mate, and great to see more streams scheduled. Won't be on for the long haul tonight, but I'll start my driver training tomorrow. Well, well. Well, corporate induction. Sorry, my eyes are going. Keep well. Um, enjoy it, bud. Fantastic. R report back and let us know how you get on. Okay, Bluegrass is requesting another round of locomotive location livery. It would be rude not to. Post, Post your, your numbers, numbers now for locomotive livery location. And we're also going to jump in the Discord server and see what's been posted over there. Uh, a smacks rail has been flying by the looks of it. Uh, Joshua, oh, why does there need to be a sign telling drivers which side to open the doors? That's quite a good question, Joshua. You can see the picture on the bottom right there. Um, the reason we have that is because it's very, very easy for drivers to open the doors on the wrong side. Now, in some areas, like in the Thameslink core, you have got technology that will prevent that from happening. Um, but believe it or not, muscle memory and automatic reactions and stuff like that. If you've got, say, about 90% of the platforms on your route are, are doors on the left, your controller's on the left-hand side here. So it's very easy. You get you get kind of muscle memory. So you kind of stop the train doors, stop the train doors, stop the train doors, stop the train doors, stop the train doors. And it'll be the station you come into when you're not consciously thinking about what you're doing. You'll go, stop the train doors and the platforms on the other side, which is why you've got that reminder. Which is when you look on the, the southeastern trains, you'll see they've got something on the door buttons which says free step check. And you'll notice when I stop the train before I open the doors, I always go eight car train, eight car mark, doors on the left. Um, and it's little techniques just prevent you from opening the doors on the wrong side. It may sound like really, really basic, you know, how can you possibly open the doors on the wrong side? Trust me, it can happen. And it can have disastrous consequences as well. If you open the doors on the wrong side, um, you get someone who's not paying attention, they press the door open button, step out, there's no platform there, potentially get hit by another train, you could have a visually impaired passenger or, or you know, is there, there's the potential for someone to get seriously hurt, so yeah, it, it is quite a serious issue. Like I say, there are places where technology's taken over, um, but generally speaking, it's uh, it's just down to the driver, which is another reason why it's good to have guards on trains. Um, if, you've got the guard, if you've got a guard on the train and the guard operates the doors, the guard normally steps onto the platform before they open the doors, so it's, it's another safety mechanism you've got there. Uh, anyway, guys, locomotive location livery, Sam Brooks, number 17. Let's play locomotive livery location. Okay, guys, let's give you box number 17. <laughs> Anything else to go on there? Let me know what you're thinking. Anything to go on there? So yeah, we're just passing over. You can see there, um, that's the lines via Redhill. 
that we're just passing over now. So the, the slow lines are now on our right hand side. Loco CL 666 non technical steel has just been on a course about it. Yeah, we had, when I was with South Eastern, we had, uh, when I was with the Blue Passenger Company, um, we done a non-technical skills course, and it was absolutely fantastic. It's probably the best course I've ever done on the railway, um, to be completely honest with you, non-technical skills. So for those of you that, that are not entirely sure, your technical skills are your, your actual physical driving ability of the train, so your rules and regulations, your, your rule book knowledge, your route knowledge, um, you know, that, that's your technical skills. Your non-technical skills are stuff like concentration, managing fatigue and lifestyle, um, uh, situational awareness, etc, etc. So it's, it's kind of the stuff you don't get taught, but the stuff that you need to know in order to, to safely drive a train. Uh, what are we thinking? Uh, South East Rail Production, 73 Thumper and St. Leonard's Engineering. At St. Leonard's Engineering. Um... James Hunt. Thumper and Train Sim well. Oh, Thumper would be awesome, wouldn't it? Um, 156 Andrews, 73. Fishy Charles, 73 at St. Leonard's. Uh, Mr. Alf looks like Mark 1 coaches. So the line to our left there, guys, is the Tattenham Corner branch. So that station you can see down there is Reedham. And the Tatna Corner branch goes round to the left there, then it comes underneath the Brighton Main Line, just here, and then joins us at Purley, which is the next station. So if you're on the slow lines, the line speed at Purley drops to 60. On the fast lines, it stays at 90. Our next speed limit change will be at South Croydon, where we drop down to 60 mile an hour. Uh, Rafe the trains what class 73 at the depot K.O. Devereaux have you driven a train in the snow yeah many times bud many times DET did you send them on uh, I think we've used a couple of yours bud did you send them to me on Twitter or are they on discord I'll, uh, I'll have a look So there's our warning ball for the 60, and um, what we want to do is at the next underbridge, we'll drop into brake step one, which should bring us down nicely for the 60 mile an hour, just the other side of South Croydon. Yeah, we had the Class 56 at Tunbridge for a little while, uh, Andrew. I did manage to go out for a cab ride on it, but uh, I, ne I didn't get the opportunity to drive it, unfortunately. But I, I did cab it um, before it disappeared. So, South Croydon Station. The lines coming into our right that you can just see over there. They are the East Scrinstead... Oh, tree in the face. They are the East Scrinstead and um, Uckfield lines. So that goes down to Oxted, East Grinstead, and Uckfield. So speed limit is going to drop to 45 going into East Croydon, except if we have position 1 route indicator. If we got position 1 route indicator, um, the speed limit, which we have, the speed limit will drop to 30 for us. Two yellow, so the red is at the end of East Croydon platform. There's your 45 board. And going into platform one, we have got a 30 mile an hour restriction, which starts just before we enter the platform. So there's our 30, we've got one yellow, red ahead. Red is at the end of the platform. This is where we've got an offside door release as well as what I was saying about the doors. Um, because we've got a red at the end of the platform, my main focus is on the red signal. So I'm approaching a red signal rather than approaching the platform. So I'm coming in a lot more cautious than what I normally would be. And we want to aim to be doing no more than 20 mile an hour over the AWS magnet. 
that will be down to your company driving policy there. And we're looking for our eight car mark, which is just coming up on the left hand side. This is a complete and utter trap for opening the doors on the wrong side as well. Because we're looking this side for the stop car mark, so it'd be really easy just to open the doors this side if you're not paying attention. So, we're going to go brake step free. We're going to set our DRA, which is driver and minor appliance, going to neutral. And we're going to do our three step checks. So we're on eight car train. We are on the eight car mark, as you can see there. And doors are on the right hand side. So some companies will, like I've said before, some companies will absolutely mandate if you're opening the doors on the offside that you do get out the chair and walk across the cab. Um, some companies it's optional. Uh, something when I was driving passenger trains, I always used to do it. Um, I found it really helpful. And we're actually well early as well. Well early, well early, well early. Which for a southern service is pretty good. We've only had one incident so far, guys. It's not going too bad. <laughs> oh, what's going on in the chat? Matthew Bryce, how old do you have to be to be a train driver? 21 or over on the mainline network, bud. Um, Johnny Simulator Gaming wants us to check the Discord. Yeah, we can do that. We, we've got a little bit of spare time going on there. Oh, look at that. It's got to be a... That's a 315, Joshua R says. And Fat Frank with some... Whatever they are. <laughs> are they... They're not 37s or... They look like 37s, but I know they're not. Brilliant. If you want to join our Discord server, guys, you'll find an invitation link in the description below. We talk about trains, planes, and all sorts of other things over there, so uh, do head over there. You'll be more than welcome to join us over there. Uh, Jonathan also says that, and you keep the doors open against a red too. Yeah, so... As Jonathan rightly points out, we don't start the dispatch procedure on the train until that signal has changed. And the reason we don't do that is because it would be really easy to go close doors, um, you get your blue interlock light, but when the doors close you get a little relay click behind you, so you get like a little, you get a, a clicking noise. It would be really easy to hear that clicking noise, take power and off you go and you've had a spad. So we don't start the dispatch procedure. Likewise if a guard goes like that on the belt, it's really easy to go back without checking that signal because you're listening for that noise then autopilot takes over you just take power and go it's just so easy to make make simple mistakes that's one of the reasons you got your DRA here that prevents you from taking power against a red signal um, so yeah we, we don't start the dispatch procedure until that signal has changed to green or changed to a proceed aspect I should say uh, DT trains I think it's a 45 so here we go, we've got two yellows, we've got a green, lock doors. It'd be really nice to have some sort of proper dispatch in this CDRA or something like that. Clapham Junction, Platform 12 is our next station. Uh, take our DRA off because the signal is clear. Driver, you have reset the DRA. Now these ones don't do that. So we're good for 45, we are off to Clapham Junction. We are an eight car train. Yeah, Jason, as you say, you'd never never TRTS on a red. That would be a, for a conductor or platform staff. It's definitely an operational incident. So we're good for 45 at the moment. We are going to go up to 60 in just a second. Just about there. We've got to wait for the back of the train to pass that. Um, there's no train length indicator on these, so that is purely guesswork. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess we're eight cars clear there. Uh, Jonathan, no, I haven't got that yet, but I am definitely getting that. That that looks absolutely lovely. That is on my, my to-buy list. Uh, K.O. Dadra, have you crashed a train? Um, I've crashed into trees and various things, but I haven't crashed where it's been my fault, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, 375601. I smashed that up quite nicely, broke the cab windscreen and done all sorts of other damage to that. If anyone has a picture of 375601 after I smashed it up, chuck it in the Discord and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, that's probably the worst one I've had though. As we come through Selhurst, speed limit goes up to 70. It stays 70 now all the way to Ballam, I believe. 
Hey, Coastway Will, welcome to Deborah, new subscriber. I'm sure I've seen your name about Coastway Will. Simulator man, loving your videos, Richard. Thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. So we drop down into Fawns and Heath, just keeping that at 70 there. So we can keep good time. Thornton Heath looking lovely. So guys, we've got 131 of you lovely people in tonight. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely awesome. I am going to be streaming every night this week, ladies and gentlemen. It is a... My son calls it Dad Rail Fest. I'm not sure that's a... Not sure that's actually what it is, but there we go. Um, tomorrow night, like I said, Birmingham Cross City, South Line, Lynchfield to Redditch, or possibly Brimsgrove. Um... And that'll be 8.30 on the channel. Then throughout the week we're going to be doing some SCR. Uh, we're going to be jumping a great British railways over on Roblox. I want to do the Romney Hive and Dimchurch on Roblox. But that's been taken off temporarily as well. Um, we will possibly have the 1066 Hastings to Charing Cross line. Uh, which Northern Princess Productions has been kind enough to create me a couple of scenarios on. We will possibly be having a go on that at some point this week. Um, however, I need to look at the the requirements list in full and make sure I've got everything because otherwise I end up spending an absolute fortune on train sim add-ons as you can imagine. Um, so we'll possibly be doing that later on in the week. And then as I said earlier, for, uh, Saturday night uh, 8.30 Saturday night there will be the usual stream. Not sure what it's going to be yet but uh, I'm hoping it's going to be Edinburgh Glasgow but I've, I've got no dates on that yet as to when I can preview it. But if it, hopefully it will be. That'll be really good if it is. Um I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of be really good if it can be. Um, then, of course, 7.30 Saturday night, Dad Rail does Fortnite, which is a one-off, completely and utterly one-off bit of fun as we pass through Streatham. Uh, Maxwell, Dad Rail, due to multiple serious bugs in robots, RHDR has been temporary. Yeah, I know it has, bud. Um, yeah, GCR as well. We can, we can definitely look into GCR. I haven't done GCR for... Um, I've I done it once, I think. It is good. We can definitely look into that. I'm going to cheat now and put the HUD up. Because I know there's a 60 coming up. I'm pretty sure it's a Balham. Uh, normally when I come through here, I'm on the slow lines in a freight train. So, just double checking my speeds on the fast. Yeah, James, my um, kids do like PC gaming. Like I say, guys, the Fortnite thing is purely a bit... A few people have mentioned it before. It is, it is a complete and utter one-off. Purely a bit of fun. Um, definitely won't be taking over the channel. Because I'm going to be completely and utterly terrible at it. Yeah, Sam, that's why I thought just before the junction at Balham. It's uphill into Balham as well. So if we take the power off, that should roll back. Yeah, officially, Charles, I, I will do GCR uh, again. I will definitely jump into GCR again. A to Z by local bus. Have you ever been to Ireland? It's the... Oh, there's a 60. Get down for it. I thought it was a bit further around, actually. Um, it's the only country in the United Kingdom I haven't been to. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely want to go to Ireland. As we come through Ballon. Coastway Wheel's got all the speeds down there. Uh, Jonathan, I know it's with the MyTrack TMS. Do you have to punch in the root code or do you manually scroll? Um, so you've, you've, you've got some options there you can just manually scroll through. In the real one, you have a root code. And you put in your route code when you set the train up. Wandsworth Common. So this area here has been re-signalled recently. Um, and I haven't driven it since it's been re-signalled. And there's an extra signal section between here and Clapham on the slow lines. Oh, 
Okay, two yellows. So we're going to start getting some break in. Um, one of the signals up here, I believe it's either the one that's currently one yellow or the one that's red, I believe is bugged. The AWS does not sound. So I'm going to be very aware of that. <laughs> and try desperately not to trigger it. Wandsworth Common, that's where Gordon Ramsay lives in that area, I believe. Right, the AWS works on that. Right, we're one yellow, red ahead. We're going to get the speed down a little bit quicker. We want to be doing no more than 20 miles an hour over the AWS magnet for the signal. That is company instructions. We are red ahead. Look at the concentration and the focus. That's not my yellow you can see there. That's what you call a read across risk. Or is that my yellow? No, that is my yellow. <laughs> AWS appears to be working as well. Are we stopping at Clapham? We are. Okay. Probably worth checking. So two yellows are red is um, beyond Clapham up near Popart's Junction. So we are eight for the eight coming into Clapham Junction, which used to be, I don't know if it still holds the title, used to be um, Britain's busiest railway station. I miss it in the glory days. Oh, I know. <laughs> Showing my age. Well, all the AWS seems to have worked, so it looks like that little bug has been fixed. I bet we don't have any stop car markers still, do we? I'm looking for it. No, there's no stop car markers at Clapham at all. So we'll just go up to the end of the platform. That's going to hammer our score, though, which is really annoying. So we are an eight-car train. We're on the eight-car mark, possibly. Doors on the left. I think my scroll wheel on my mouse has just bugged out. It's not letting me zoom in or out of anything at the moment. That's a bit weird. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, we are bang on time as well. Look at that. Excellent. Uh, da, 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 da. Maxwell, Dadrow, 601 is in the Discord. Okay, let's jump over there. There we go. That is the one. You can just about see it at the top there and the bottom. That is the one I smashed up. Hit a nice big tree. The story about that is on my Wikipedia page, which someone created for me. Train spot from Berkshire, thank you very much. Right, we've got a green. We are off to Victoria. We are 60, then we are down to 45. So just for the sake of full disclosure, I do not sign the route from Popart's Junction to London, Victoria. So this is purely winging it. Okay, uh, Clapham Junction is where you transfer for London Overground. Yeah, it is indeed, bud. It is indeed. So the 45 starts just after the junction. So position one on that signal there would drop you down to Long Hedge Junction. You can then go to Victoria via Stewart's Lane. Or, if you're feeling really excitable, you can go around the corner to Factory Junction and end up on the southeastern uh, Chatham or the Atlantic lines at Wandsworth Road. So we're down in the 45. That is my one yellow. We're going quite fast past the one yellow there. Let's drop a little bit more break in. If in doubt, creep about. We are red ahead.
There is the red. So no more than 20 mile an hour over the AWS magnet. Well, I think the official ruling is 20 mile an hour, 200 yards from the signal. But you can use the AWS magnet as a guide in most cases. Um, some signals, the AWS magnet is closer. And a red, as far as we're concerned as driver, a red signal is a brick wall. That stepped up to green. We're just going to jump into the Discord quickly because there's a couple of people asking. Battle Fortnite Battle Royale. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for that. So we're 45 at the moment. It drops to 25 in a minute, doesn't it? It drops to 40 and then 25. Like I said, I don't sign this bit of the route, so... I'm winging it. Maxwell, if in doubt, floor it, floor it out. No, if, if in doubt, creep about. Um, a red signal is a brick wall. We never run towards a brick wall. That was the way my mentor put it to me years ago. So we're going to have a Groves and a Bridge. And then we drop down. There's... Oh, it's 45 there. Where was the 40 then? Ah, oh, coming up. Then it drops down to 25, I think. Yeah, transport. Are moving block signalling and functional platform screen doors possible in train simulator? Moving block signalling we don't have on the UK network. Two yellows. Um, at the moment, but it would be really great to see. Functional uh, platform screen doors is something that I've asked about before, but apparently it would use far too much system resources in order to implement it. So that's why we don't have it. But that would be something really, really cool to see. Okay, one yellow platform 18. We're into Victoria. There's the 20. Really, really steep coming down into fix. So we're just going to keep a little bit of braking. We're going to bring it down to 15, then we're going to release the brakes and let it roll. If we try and keep it at 20... Um, we're going to be sort of on and off the brakes as it picks up speed. So if we come down to 15, it just gives it a little bit more time to roll up before we need to put the brakes on again. Otherwise, we're feathering the brakes, which is just not, not really a great way to drive. All the way to the left. So going into terminal platforms, you want to be doing no more than 15 mile an hour at the platform ramps. Which we are perfectly good for there. Uh, it's 20, not 20. Yeah, brilliant. And we want to be doing no more than 10, nearer 5 than 10, um, as we go over the TPWS grids at the station. So approaching buffer stops, you've got TPWS overspeed loops, which do not work on this route, but they do work on the cross-city line. You have been warned. Oh, Jonathan, that would be amazing to see some uh, SWR AI. I believe there is a... There is an HST that goes through Clapham Junction if you've got the Great Western layer. So we're nearer 5 and 10 as we go approach the buffer stops. Uh, KO, we are approaching London Victoria now. If you mean in real life, I'm about 65, 70 miles away. In game, we are there now. And we want to be stopping six foot away from the buffer stops. Which can actually be quite hard to judge in the real world. We'll go with that. And uh, the buffer stops are glasses of red signal, so it's brake step free, DRA, and into neutral. We're going to get up out of the seat. We're on eight car train. We are on the buffer stops. Doors on the right. Just check that for six foot. That's. It's a generous six foot. <laughs> Train's empty. Everyone's... Oh, crikey. <laughs> That's not good, is it? Falling on the track. Quick, med screen that driver. Okay, what's he want us to do HUD-wise? 
Let's see what score we've got on that. What are you giving me? What are you giving me? Come on. Oh, gold medal. I'll take that. I'll absolutely 100% take that. Oh, look at that at Hayward Teeth. Look at that stop accuracy at Hayward Teeth. 0.326 yards. 0.326 yards. That, that is like... 0.719 yards at East Croydon. Oh, I'm getting good at this. I'll take that. That's, that's not too bad at all. That's not. Okay, guys. Right. Let's do one more round of this. Post, Post your, your numbers, numbers now, now for locomotive livery location. location. And as the thumbnail says, we are going to do a return run. So this is going to be the last round of locomotive livery location on this particular um, run. We'll do a reveal right after this one. But we do have a second game. So. Let's play locomotive livery location. The BVE 2010. I need to play some more BVE. Maybe we could do that later on in the week. Number four. This is going to be your last reveal, guys, because someone has already got this right. I can tell you. It doesn't give you much to go on there, does it? Doesn't give you much at all. Do let me know what you're thinking, though. We are going to do... We'll, we'll do a big reveal. Let's do a reveal. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. South East Rail Productions, you got this really early on, so congratulations. Was a bit of a tricky one, though. I felt it was a bit of a tricky one. Um, yeah, class 73-9 at St. Leonard's Depot, St. Leonard's Engineering Depot. So, yeah, well done to um, South East Rail Productions for getting that one right. Okay, let's press the reset button. I am loading up another route as, as we do this, guys. And I'm going to press game number two. Picture from the Mersey Rail 508-120. That is not the locomotive, though. I can tell you that now. And we'll jump back over to the game. And we are doing a 387 run. We're going to do from Victoria um, back down to Brighton. Uh, 9.12 in the morning. Dynamic weather. Let's put that on light clouds and see if we get a bit of rain. Because that would make the... Um, that would make the journey just a little bit more interesting, I feel. So while that is loading, guys, I'm going to put an advert into the, into the stream. I do apologise. Welcome back. Apologies for the advert. Dad Rao, gotta eat. <laughs> That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Right, where are we stopping? Gatwick Airport on Brighton. So we're, we're a nice fast run back down to Brighton. Um, there's a lot of you in tonight. I am trying my best to keep up with the chat. So if I haven't read your message, just keep... Not literally spamming it, but just keep posting it. And hopefully I will uh, we'll see it and get around to it. Okay, so safety systems in. Key in. So this one does talk to you, but it's very quiet. It's because it's got the Mark IV um, TPWS panel on it, which talks to you. But it's, it's really, really quiet. Okay, so day running. We can keep that on auto. Let's not play with that too much. And we are a 12-car train. Doors on the right-hand side. Uh, we'll put the heads-up display on. We'll not you out for another minute or so yet, but we'll put it on anyway. Have a little look around outside. Okay, guys, while we are waiting departure... Uh, while we're waiting departure, let's play. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Oh, network are going out the other side there, guys, look. Oh, subterranean stations and free cam. It's just... 
It doesn't work. <laughs> you can just see the network pulling out. Fan dappy dozy. Okay, we've got a green. Uh, David, uh, it's very, very kind of you, my friend. Um, however, you will be getting a cancellation email from Patreon very soon because I've actually can I've actually closed my Patreon page. Although Patreon are not playing kind with me at the moment. So I'm not using Patreon anymore, bud, but thank you very much. If you want to support the channel, though, you can do through um, YouTube membership. But thank you very much all the same, bud. Really appreciate that. Okay, so we're 15... What are we, 20 coming out of here? Don't sign this bit of the route. We're doing it hubless. We're going hubless. Uh, yeah, James, you do get the 166 on this route. It runs between, um, it runs between Rygate, Red Hill, and Gatwick. Uh, it works the, the Reading to Gatwick services, uh, as a rule. <laughs> PVE 2010. Electrostars are the iPhones of EMUs. Is that, is that kind of like, because they're really simple, or is that the kind of Marmite comparison? Ah, uh, Trainsport from Berkshire, what is the best Electrostar? Oh, that's that's not a fair question. I'm I'm biased, aren't I, to the 375 because I spent many years driving them. Right, we're 12 clear, we're up to 40. Different perspective, nicer time of day to be running the route. And we get up to 40 and we'll do our running brake test as well just to make sure the brakes actually do work. Yeah, very simple. They are indeed. They are they're workhorses though, to be to be completely honest with you. They they just do the job and they do it well. Jason, excellent, bud. Hopefully you'll you'll thoroughly enjoy that. A to Z by local bus. Have you ever being on an international train. Uh, if you mean like a cross-border service, the only one I've done is like Le Chateau through the Channel Tunnel. But I have been on trains in Germany and Portugal um, and Italy. Yeah, just Germany, Portugal and Italy. Yeah, Daryl, the 357 is the Electrostar that... Um, free C to C. I want to call them C to C. I don't know what they're called now. I remember them as C to C use. So are we good for 45 here? Or are we still in a 40? Yeah, we're 45, then up to 60. Don't sign this bit of the route. <laughs> uh, train spot from Berkshire. If the running brake test failed, you would probably change your underwear. Because <laughs> it's not a good day. So, depends what type of train you're in again. If you put the brakes on and nothing happens... Like I've just done there, just applied the brakes. We are slowing down, little running brake test there. Yeah, if you put the brakes in and nothing's happened, first thing you're going to do is you're going to whack that all the way into emergency. Uh, if nothing happens still, you're going to press that big red stop button. If there's still nothing happening, um, you're kind of in trouble, to be fair. But what you can do, and it does depend on what traction you're in, 387s, 377s, Electrostar units. If you go over to the second man side... Just on the floor here where my mouse is, there's a removable panel. If you take that panel off, it's literally just got like a push button on it and it pops off. Um, if you take that panel off, underneath there you'll find a big isolating uh, isolating valve. A big I isolating cock, but if I use that word too many times then YouTube demonetise me. You'll find a big isolating tap. Um, and what that will do is it will dump your main res air pressure. So your main res air pressure, there's 7.4 bar of main res air pressure. It will dump that air pressure. Now the parking brakes 
on modern electric locomotive and uh, modern electrical multiple units are spring applied or sprung applied and air released. So you've got massive great big springs against the block and when there's no air in those springs are holding the brakes tight against the wheels. Once you put air against it the air then pushes the spring off and releases the brake. So you pull that that tap under there, that C word under there, isolating C word. That's the emergency parking brake application cock. Um, if you pull that, it will dump your main res, which will cause the springs on the parking brakes to then force the brake blocks against the wheels. So that would be your kind of last line of defense. If that doesn't work, then um, you can just kiss your goodbye. I've wanted to use that button all night. I, I found a use for the beep button. Uh, yeah, and as BVE 2010 says, you wouldn't use the red emergency button in that case. That would be a really, really bad idea. So if your brakes weren't working, uh, we're still 60 here, aren't we, guys? Yeah, 70 doesn't start till Ballum. Too busy talking. Less talking, more driving. There we go. Yeah, what question was I answering? I'm... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peapod, welcome to Devra, our new subscriber. Um, yeah, so you, if you press the big red button on the uh, radio, that's going to make all the trains around you that receive that call stop. If you've got a train in front of you and you've got no brakes, the last thing you want to do is force that train to stop. So by pressing the yellow button, that's an urgent call to the signaller, um, the signaller can then call up the train in front of you and say, get the hell out of the way. <laughs> get the out of the way. Right, one's worth common. Uh, Bluegrass is asking for Discord. Let's jump over to Discord and have a quick look over there. Oh, look at that LNER set. Beautiful. And the 158 from Rowan. Don't forget, guys, if you want to post over in the Discord, you can do. There's an invitation link in the description. We're in the live stream pictures page. And welcome to the British Ace and all the viewers from the um, British Aces channel. Fantastic to have you here. Uh, a to Z by local bus. First station I'm stopping at the moment is Gatwick Airport, isn't it? I think I'm a Gatwick Express service. Yeah, so fast to Gatwick. So we are good for 70 once we get around the corner here. Hey, Mr. Jolly, welcome to Deborah, new subscriber. Great to have you here. There are 138 of you lovely people watching tonight. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. If you don't hit the like button, then you know. Emotional damage! I just wanted to press the button. Hey, Side Productions, good evening, how are you doing? I saw Nando's logo. I've, I've lost the thread, but I've, I saw Nando's logo. Now, we're always up for a Nando's. I'm getting all my keys mixed up with this. This, this drive's not going very well. Right, we're just coming across um, Streatham, South, Streatham North Junction. At the moment, I believe it's called. And we're coming through Streatham Station proper. Hey, Davidov, thank you very much, bud. Happy New Year to you. Uh, GJ Barnard, if the brakes fail, then can the power be cut somehow? Yeah, you, you definitely could make a phone call and they could um, shut off the power to the third rail. However, trains will roll for absolutely miles. Um, so although, yeah, you could, you could technically cut the power, um, you're not going to stop in a hurry at all.
we are coming through Norbury. Just trying to keep up with the chat, guys. It's, it's, it's going a little bit mad tonight. The notification was late, but thank you very much, Davidoff. Really appreciate that, bud. Okay, should we play a game while we're waiting? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Kent Freshlover, are some whistleboards optional? For example, if two crosses are in close proximity, I've noticed that some drivers don't sound their horn on the second board. Not as far as I know, no. A whistleboard's mandatory between the hours of uh, 0600 and midnight. Uh, low tone only between 0600 and midnight, so you, you should, should be sounding it. Right, two yellows. Red is just before Selhurst. Loads of people posting numbers. Let's let's do it before we approach this red signal. Let's play locomotive livery location. Max, you're straight in there. You're the third number on my screen with number four. If you haven't seen this before, guys, I'm going to reveal box number four. You've got ten seconds to give me the locomotive livery and location. <laughs> Not much to go on there, but give it a go. You never know. You might get it right. Let me know your thoughts on that. Someone might get it right. Yeah, DET, a whistleboard typically, or the rule book says, one tone only, should be low tone only. However, most drivers, myself included, sound two tones. Um, but the, the rule book is low tone only. And there is our red ahead, guys. Is the train to the left gonna spad? That is, he is coming up to that signal really quickly. I think the train, the train to my, my my left is about to have a spad. He came up to that signal really quickly. I see. I assume it's changed. <laughs> we want to aim to stop approximately one coach length away from the signal. Um, However, we want to be able to read the signal ID plate. So we can see there we got Tango 63 signal. So once we stop the red signal, brake step free, DRA in and into neutral. And now we wait. Hey, the British Ace, how are we doing, bud? Great to have you here. Um, thank you for sending your viewers over there. I saw the notification as well. I did welcome everyone. Much appreciated. Um, what are we reckoning? A to Z by local buses, it's Wales. Uh, side production says 465. Volvo B10M, you are correct, it is a tree. Class tree. <laughs> Excellent. Right, okay, one yellow. Into forward. Oh, he's gone too far. Nobody saw that, that didn't happen. We've got to green now, anyway. That wouldn't be tea and biscuits with the managers. That would not be tea and biscuits. Tango 63 must be at the pad. Indeed. Well, Crystal Palace football ground. We're at Celeste. So we're going to get it up to um, probably about 50. Because we're going to start dropping down towards East Croydon. And we've got 45 for East Croydon. There is the commencement of our 60 board at Selhurst. So the lines to our left there in the middle, that takes you down to Gloucester Road Junction. Um, and then round to West Croydon and on to Sutton. Uh, the lines to the far left, that's the slow lines. It's a very complicated junction around here. Windmill Bridge Junction, Cottage Junction. Um, the whole kind of East Croydon, Norwood, Sellers Triangle is just mental. It's quite it's quite an awkward bit of route to learn uh, in real life because there's so much going on. Daytona, the AI train uses step free by the looks of it. Yeah, it's... Uh, the... 
the class 700s do that when they're running under AI or ATO, should I say, technically. Um, it's 45 coming up. Yeah, the I've, I've heard from a lot of the, the, the Thameslink drivers, the GTR Thameslink drivers on the 700s, when they're running ATO through the Thameslink core, uh, which they only do occasionally, because not all of their drivers are trained in ETCS and ATO, believe it or not. But um, when they're going up towards red signals and stuff, the train's literally full power and full brakes. And it'll come up to a red signal, then chuck full brakes on and stop, sort of bang on the nose of the signal. And a lot of the drivers say it's absolutely terrifying. Um, because as humans, obviously, we tend to err on the side of caution. Whereas the computer knows exactly how much brake force it's got. It's done the calculations and it's hammering up to that red light. Until somebody's put a leaf on the track. And then you're absolutely done for. Finley John, hello, welcome. <coughs> Oh, we buggered that up, didn't we? Sorry, Max. There we go. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sophie. Appreciate that. Okay, so we're good to go back up to 60, and then once we get past South Croydon, we're going back up to 90. Leaves in tunnels. Yeah, why not? It's going to take that power back a little bit so we don't bust the 60 as we come through um, South Croydon there. Daryl, Dadra, what do you do if you need the toilet when you're driving a train? You hold it. <laughs> but simply. Um, no, seriously, yeah. You, you hold it or find a safe place to stop and then make use of the line side facilities, if you know what I mean. Or if you're driving a passenger train... Um, contact the signaller, tell him you're taking an urgent PMB and then walk back and use the facilities on the train. Oliver's train vids and more. I feel like I should start singing that Alexa song now. If you say Alexa I love you she starts singing a song but I, I don't sing. British film guy, I wonder how many Thames Link passengers have been sick when the train has been in ATO. A few people have fallen over apparently because it you know, people hear the next station Next station is London Black Friday, and everyone starts standing up, and then the train comes hammering in and chucks the brakes on, and everyone goes flying. Pearly Oaks. Knifed by a kangaroo. Has anyone ever forgotten their PPE? Do you get a fine as well as sent home? I've never heard of anyone being fined for not having the correct PPE. Um, if you're on like work sites, like T3 Ballast sites and stuff, you can certainly be kicked off a site or not allowed on site for not having the correct uh, correct PPE. Um, likewise, if you went line site without a high vis on, then you, you know people are not going to like that. You're going to get into trouble for that. As we speed through Pearly, we're getting up to 90. Let's play a game. I've got too many buttons on here now. I can't find the right button. Right, here we go. Post, Post your, your numbers, numbers now for locomotive, locomotive livery location. location. Gregory Allen, good evening. How are we doing? Uh, Harry Strange, do you have a particular loco that you don't like to drive in real life? Ooh. I, I quite enjoy everything I sign. If I had a least favourite, I'd say it's probably the Class 69s. And I, I still like driving the Class 69s. But the reason I say it's probably the Class 69s is because they are incredibly noisy and rattly inside. Um, but I, they drive really well. But yeah, if I was, out of everything I sign, if I was to have to pick one, it would, it would, it would unfortunately um, be the Class 69. Uh, Trains from Berkshire, Davrell. Can you put the reverse in the other direction and add power if the brakes have failed? Uh, probably not, no. I, you wouldn't get traction power in the opposite direction all the time you were moving forward, so I, that, I don't think that would work. I've never tried it, though, to be honest with you, but I, I doubt that would work. You'd probably burn the traction motors out and cause all sorts of problems as well. Okay, guys, right, what have we got? I'm going with the third number on my screen. GJ Barnard. You're the third one on my screen with number 19. Let's play. 
Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, guys, going to give you box number 19. 10 seconds, Locomotive Livery. <laughs> Oh, hello, that's good. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know. Uh, okay, so we will. The 69s look a bit cramped on the inside as well. Yeah, they, to be fair, they are. Um, <laughs> it's gone mad for seven, 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 sevens. I'm glad it's not six, 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 six. Uh, one down in his boat. You are 100% correct. That is a train. Or is it a tram? I remember once, um, it, was, it was the other Sam, actually, that was in the chat. Sam Robinson was in the chat. And he said, that's a train. And on that particular day, it was a tram. It was a <laughs> Deansgate tram on the Metrolink. So, yeah, you never know. Um, Volvo, class 28 on the moon. That would be some feat, wouldn't it? Uh, something tells me a bunch of nerds have guessed a train. 777 at Southport. Mersey Ralph 777. Maxwell, you're not wrong. It is definitely something on Earth. That, that's, a, that's a pretty generic guess, but I would say you, you're pretty safe with that. <laughs> Cal Pride thought it was a Boeing 777. <laughs> uh, Davidoff, have you any thoughts on the 385 coming to Train City World? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm really looking forward to to getting the uh, the 385. I'm oh, I'm speeding. Um, I'm, I'm. It's got a lot of promise with what's been implemented on it and what they've said and, and what I've seen in the previews. It's got the potential to be really, really good. I, I'm just hoping it is. And I'm, I, I'm hoping it doesn't promise loads and deliver nothing. But I, it's really nice to have another route in Scotland. And I'm really, really looking forward to get, getting in that and having a play with it. Uh, British Ace, a non-UK train, perhaps. Wow. Ah. Uh, Aston Martin fan, what's your favourite Scott Rail class, Richard? D to be perfectly honest with you, bud, I've got very little knowledge on Scott, on Scott Rail um, units and stuff like that, so I, I'm not really able to comment on that. DT Trends, Richard, on Saturday when you're in Fortnite, I'll try and get in your game and give you lots of good gut. Well, hey. Yeah, I've got, I've got to get my son to help me with that, but I believe there's a way we can kind of set up a server where we can all play together. So if anyone wants to join in and just have a... It's just going to be a good laugh, a bit of a social. We might have the voice chat open in Discord or something as well. Just just have, you know, a bit of a laugh. Uh, go, bro. Speaking of jets, what's your favourite plane, Richard? Oh. My favourite plane. I quite li I quite like like the um, turboprop stuff, like the um, I can't remember what they're called Bombardier something or other turboprop thingies. Yeah. <laughs> right, there's an eighty coming up. Let's get some serious braking so I don't bust that. Oh, nah, that's fine. I'm taking it. That's not tea and biscuits. Uh, yeah, Loco uh, Class 66, yeah, no worries, bud. Feel free to... I've still got your memory stick as well. I need to send that back to you. <laughs> You've got some great videos on your channel as well, Loco um, Class 66. If you if you want to promote your channel um, and put a link, you, he's got some, Loco Class 66 is in the chat. He's got some really, really great um, videos on his channel. So if you want to put a... Q400, thanks, Blue Cross. Yeah, if you want to put a link to that, bud, you're more than welcome to. So back up to 90. Next station stop for us is Gatwick Airport. We're not too far away. Ah, uh, the Avro Lancashire. Yeah, I'd probably say a Mosquito then if we're sort of talking about older planes. The Wright Flyer was quite good as well. 
Uh, Davidoff, when is the SCR stream? I, I'm not 100% sure, but there will be an SCR stream this week, Davidoff. We're going to be doing SCR, GCR, and Great British Railways. Um, maybe all in the same stream, I don't know yet. They may all be on the same day, but we will definitely be doing an SCR this week. Uh, DT Trades, can you stream... Si the trouble with streaming SimSig Bugle is I, I kind of feel like it would be... I kind of feel like it would be a little bit boring to watch back. I mean, if it's something people want me to stream, I can do, but I don't really know a great deal about sort of signalling from a, from a signaller's perspective, so... I mean, I, I can stream it, but I feel like it, it doesn't make very exciting watching. But, you know, what do I know? Maybe, maybe, maybe people do want to see that. Uh, knife by kangaroo. Have you ever had to work during one of our scheduled holidays? Uh, how do you mean, bud? DT trains. Richard, what phobias do you have? Uh, phobia of trains. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, I don't think I have any particular phobias. I used to be really, really scared of needles, uh, which is a bit of a silly one, I know. Um, but the COVID vaccine kind of done me a favour because obviously I had to have that because I wanted to travel and, and stuff. Um, and that kind of helped me overcome that. Uh, Aston Martin fan, tomorrow will be the 323 on the Birmingham Cross City line. I'm keeping an eye on this now because I don't want to just know I'm going to overshoot Gatwick Airport. Doing free bridges without ARS would be interesting. We could do. We could set up through the Discord, like we could arrange kind of a multiplayer. Uh, I don't think it'd be a good stream, but we could we could arrange like a multiplayer SimSig. Um, that that would be good. Like requested knife by a kangaroo, like requested holiday. So if I request a holiday and the holiday is approved, that's pretty much set in stone then. Once once my holiday's been approved, um, I'm under no obligation to work it. So if, if they approve a holiday and then suddenly they don't have anyone to cover it, that's kind of not my problem. Um, if I'm not doing anything, you know, then I might choose to help out and, you know, go into work. But generally speaking, if, if you're approved an annual leave day or a holiday day then uh, yeah it's it's kind of set in stone so the speed limits coming through Gatwick have changed now there's a 50 mile an hour restriction that starts here because Gatwick is all being resignaled and changed and rebuilt and everything at the moment so all right, we are 12 for the 12. We're coming in there a little bit hot, aren't we? Let's get some break in. We've only had one lot of tea and biscuits with the manager today, and I intend to keep it that way. And we are 12 for the 12. Stephen Lees, hello. Welcome to the stream. Uh, there's the 8 car mark. And there's the 12 at the end of the platform, just about there. Oh, we've overshot the mark, but we're on the platform. So we are a 12... <laughs> I've turned it off again. We're a 12-car train. We're on the 12-car mark. Platform is on the left. We have a trio of 387s. What do you call a trio of trains? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, yeah, you're quite right. The platform isn't in service. I, I, no, saying that, saying that, I believe it is now in service. I believe it's the, um, I believe, is five still out? But six is back in, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I, it's, it's all been re-signalled there over Christmas, but I haven't been through there yet. I do have the signalling briefs on it, though. Um, Richard, we need to get Joe on SCR. <laughs> Harry's trains, yeah, the three one three. Is really good. I, I do like the 313. There is a 313 up the Brighton main line, isn't it? Which uh, I need to have a little play on. Into forward. Okay, we've got a green. Off we go. All the way down to Brighton. A trio of trains is trains. Or Trions. <laughs> yeah, Brewglass, nice one. Um, 
I did just see an interesting question. Knife by a kangaroo, how long does it take to inspect a train before you can start work? So to do a full prep on a train, it depends on, on the type of train. Um, for example, a class 66, I think we're allowed 25 minutes to carry out a full prep, but that's just on the locomotive, not on the whole train and wagons. I think from my my memory, when I was doing passenger trains, like four car, a four car 375, um, I believe you used to get half an hour um, to prep from a cold start. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. A trio of trains is a convoy. We got ourselves a convoy. A to Z by local bus. Do you know of any train driver who failed to stop at a station where they were scheduled to stop at? Uh, yeah, quite a few. Um, fortunately, touch wood. I mean, I'm driving tra freight trains now, but touch wood, I've, I've never done it. Um, I overshot once, but that's a story I can't tell publicly. Um, but yeah, I, I've i never done it, but yeah, drivers have done it. I was on the receiving end uh, when I first started my railway career. I was platform staff at Tunbridge. And there's uh, between Seven Oaks and Tunbridge, there's a small station called Hildenborough. And it was... It's a common one for train... I say common, it doesn't happen all the time, but, you know, it's it's one that occasionally gets missed by train drivers. And a train come in from London that had failed to stop at Hildenborough, and I was the platform staff at Tunbridge. So the train stopped, and the passengers that wanted Hildenborough got off at Tunbridge, and I kind of took the rap for that. They were not, not the politest bunch of people, let's put it that way. Uh, how far do you usually drive a freight train at work? 70 plus miles. Depends on the route and what we're doing, to be to be fair. If we're doing, like, the Tunbridge to Southampton runs 120 miles each way. Um, so that's, like, 240 miles in a, in a journey. Um, if we're doing, like, railhead treatment trains, some of those are, like, sort of, you know, 250, 300 mile trips. So, yeah, it's, it's very dependent on, on exactly what job you're doing. Um, then you might get some other jobs that are more local where you're only doing sort of 40 or 50 miles. It's, yes, it's very dependent on, on the job. Neil Warner. I used to drive on the miniature railway. Drew Sillers. Oh, no. Drew Sillers. I know Drew Sillers. I've never been, but I know. <laughs> okay, guys. Right, we are just going past Free Bridges Depot. Dovetail game 700, please. Populate Free Bridges Depot with 700s. So, as we're coming past Free Bridges and we are not too far from Brighton, let's play again. Post your numbers, numbers now for locomotive livery location. Aston Martin fan, what's your average shift in hours? It varies so much. So, we've got quite a lot of shifts which are like 11, 12 hours. Um, the shortest shift we do is 6 hours. Um, so, between 6 and 12. But most shifts are sort of closer to 10, 12 hours. Yeah, knife by a kangaroo. I did have a train set as a kid. How'd you guess? Planes, trains and games. Yeah, I had a good Christmas, bud. How about yourself? And Happy New Year to you. Right, there's an 80 coming up. Let's slow down for the 80. And once we get in the tunnel... Where's the 80? There's the 80. I knew there was an 80 there somewhere. <laughs> Bluegrass, breaking news. Dan Rudd has crashed on Iceland's death row, killing 10,000 strawberries on Trucker's MP because he was reading this message. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, okay. Locomotive location livery. Pig and Bob. You're the third one on my screen with number 20. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Oh, number 20s. Let's give it number 20. <laughs> Doesn't that help you guys? Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know. Your uh, Josh Rickwood. Hi, Richard. What routes and traction do you currently sign? Um, so, traction wise, I've got class 66s, uh, class 69s, class 73s, class 73 9s. Um, route wise, so I sign 
pretty much all of Sussex and Surrey, all of the southern network, uh, a large chunk of the southeastern network, and the southeastern main, uh, sorry, southwestern main line down to Southampton, um, as well as the southwestern main line via round the back via Staines, um, Virginia Water, Chertsey, Richmond through that way, Hounslow Loop. Um, down to Acton Mainline via Willesden, West London Line. A fair, fair bit of route knowledge. Sandbrook speeding. Oh, I am speeding, yeah. It is downhill through here as well, so I should know that. So let's just drop the speed down a little bit. What are we thinking? Everyone's saying 777. Edward Evans says Kirkdale. Johnny Simulator Gaming says Kirby. Train Spot from Berkshire says 777 Mersey Rail. Davidoff wants me to go to the Discord. That's the wrong button for Discord. Oh, look at the doggy. Oh, and the 56 at Red Hill. Fantastic. Uh, Daryl Henry, Debro, is it hard to become a train driver? Uh, that's a good question, Daryl. In what respect? Do you mean is it hard to get a train driver's job or is it hard to do the training to become a train driver? Uh, Ella Wilson, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Transport from Berkshire, can we have another Transport Fever 2 stream? Um, possibly, bud. I'm not planning on any, but I'll never say never. Oh, Neil, that is excellent. Driving the train at Drusilla's once in the rain. Forgot to put Sam down on the hill. Got to the top and lost traction. Went all the way down again with worried looking passengers. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Is it hard to get the job? So, yes and no, Daryl. If you're applying to the railway as an external applicant, so you've got no railway experience, then it you know you're potentially up against I think the last thing I saw was like there's a thousand applications for every position or something like that so it can be quite difficult however my advice would be if you want to be a train driver is just get a job on the railway so get a job as um, a conductor or platform staff and then work your way up through the ranks railway companies are much more likely to to take you on and to promote you into the driving grade um, if you've got a bit of excuse the pun track history so if, you're, if you've been employed by the railway for five years, they know you're reliable, they know what sort of person you are, you've got a bit of rapport with the management and stuff like that. They're more likely to make that investment in you to, to want to upskill you to become a driver. It can cost, you know, I think the last thing I saw was like upwards of £100,000 to train a train driver. So they'd rather spend that money on someone that they know is going to be able to do the job well, they know is not going to be phoning in sick all the time because if you've worked for them for a little while, you've got you know, a little bit of a rapport going. So that that's the that's the route I took. I, I started on the railways platform staff at Tunbridge. Um, I then worked as a platform shunter before progressing on to shunter driver, um, and then mainline driver. But it is entirely possible just to go on the train company's website, apply for a driver's job, and get the job. That's entirely possible. Um, but by far the the best route, in my opinion, um, and the, the the route you're most likely to have the most success with is just get your foot in the door of a train company. Um, and, and kind of just apply internally and work your way up, really. Uh, Richard, what will you do if your train run out of diesel? Um, if my train run out of diesel? Do! <laughs> I'm trying to find the right one. Emotional damage! Sorry. Uh, if, if my train run out of diesel, it's going to stop and there's not much I can do about it. Um, that would then be, you need assistance to the front of the train. Um, which would mean going out, laying down detonators and all sorts of robot modules and stuff come out. Uh, Jester 1, 2, 12 to 18 months and over 130,000 pounds. Coastway will currently looking at entering the rail industry as a host. I shall give no further details, but fingers crossed it leads me somewhere. Definitely, but go for it. Hopefully we'll be welcoming welcoming you into the railway family and don't forget Coastway Will if you get a job on the railway as a host you can join our um, you can join the staff mess room on our discord server which is a channel reserved for railway staff only 
Uh, Davidoff, do you think there will be more strikes coming? I know there isn't any scheduled at the moment. Uh, yeah, I think it's very likely there will be more strikes coming, Davidoff. Um, as you know, guys, I don't like to get too political on the streams. Um, what I will say is the company that I work for are not in dispute. We're not on strike. Um, our company have looked after us throughout the pandemic. Um, they've looked after us this year as well. We're, we've got, yeah... We're not in dispute with our company in any way, shape, or form. I'm not not directly involved in the strike action. Um, so yeah, it would really be fair for me to comment on it too much. Uh, Daryl, I've want, been wanting to be a driver since I was 17. I'm now 30. Go for it, bud. Go for it. Nothing to lose. Absolutely, go for it. Um, I lucky 96 hello please could you answer my question on the Birmingham route what speed do you approach a signal to ensure that the thing doesn't apply the emergency brake um, that is a very good question there is absolutely no set speed it's on a signal by signal basis if you're approaching a red signal at a speed where you're able to stop it using no more than brake step 2 then you should never um, trigger the, the TPWS loops for it as a general rule of thumb, if you're able to stop at that signal using no more than 50% of your braking capacity, you should be absolutely fine. Um, if, if it's constantly triggering the emergency brakes and you're definitely coming up to it too fast. Uh, Aston Martin fan, what goes on in the Dad Brown mess room? Well, <laughs> that would be telling. Uh, Traceball from Barksy. Dad, if you run out of diesel on a 73 and you're on third rail network, can you continue running or do you have to stop? No, if you're on third rail, that wouldn't be a problem at all. When, once you're on third rail on the class 73, the diesel engine is is uh, shut down, so you don't need it at all. Amy, good evening. Haven't watched the stream in a while. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Uh, I haven't streamed in a while. Since middle of December, I want to say. Maybe even earlier than that. At least six weeks. So, yes. Uh, Gregory Allen, do you get lonely in the cab? You can do, Gregory. I'm, I'm in a fortunate position where I'm I'm a mentor driver, so I quite often have trainees with me, which is quite nice for a bit of company as, as well as anything else. Um, but yeah, it, it can get lonely up in the cab. It, it most definitely can. Depends on your mindset, really. It definitely depends on your mindset. Coming into the beautiful Clayton Tunnel. I should have got a flyby shot then. It, w it would have looked like Joe's introduction if I'd got a flyby shot of Clayton. Fantastic introduction, that is. Yeah, Northern Princess Productions, with without wanting to get political again. <laughs> As a member of the RMT, I find it curious that companies that aren't under DFT control, like most of the Fox, have agreed a pay increase. Those under DFT controls are having a harder time. Yeah, the, the, the bottom line is, guys, in, in the whole dispute, um, if you look at, like, open access operators, like, um, what's, what's the pink ones? Loom, blue ones, Lumo. If you look at open access operators and freight operators, and I believe, like, Transport for Wales as well, all of those companies have managed to settle and come to agreements. It's only companies that are controlled by the Department for Transport that have been unable to reach an agreement. Um, you know, make of that what you will, but it's it's a little bit strange that it's only companies that are controlled by the government that have been unable to reach an agreement. So, yeah. Hey, Steve. Thank you very much. Good to be back. Yeah, not bad. How was your Christmas? I look 96. That's your first start to eight from... Uh, the pedal you keep pressing. It doesn't actually. No, it's, it's it's quite a sort of. It feels quite natural when you're doing it. Yeah, it's it's, it's all right. You would have thought it does, but it, it it doesn't. It's kind of positioned in such a way where it's it's all right. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Okay, I don't think the UK railway is underfunded. And again, I'm I'm really going to try not to get too political on this. The trouble with the UK Railway Network is we've got the most expensive ticket prices in Europe. But we also have companies... 75 coming up, Patchup Tunnel. We also have companies that are drawing quite large profits off the, off the top of it. We've got 
in the UK, we've we've got state-run, German state-run railway, French state-run railway, Belgium state-run railway, all running train services for profit in the UK. So, you know, you, you've got a service. There's enough money going. There's enough money going going through the network and in passenger fares and everything else. There's enough funding, but a lot of that is being taken off in profits during COVID. I'm really trying not to get political and, and do fact check everything I'm saying. Uh, during COVID, the railways made £500 million in profit. They, they claimed God knows how much money from the government in furlough, but still managed to pay £500 million to the shareholders. Every time the drivers go, oh, every time the RMT um, or the train drivers go on strike, the companies don't lose money. The government pay them. So the, the companies don't lose money. So, the, the, you know, there's money that's just being ble bled out of the industry hand and foot. People sort of say, oh, you know, yeah, the, the, the wages are going to go up, which is going to make the fares go up. It's completely wrong because fares have gone up by RPI plus so many percent for the last God knows how many years. But I can absolutely promise you that staff have not had RPI level pay increases since, you know, nowhere near RPI pay increases. But the, the fares have gone up by RPI plus. So to kind of say, oh yeah, the reason the fares have gone up is because the drivers want more money or the staff want more money is it's completely wrong because the fares have gone up way more than wages. So, you know, where's all that money going? It's, um, unfortunately, you've got rolling stock leasing companies and it, the whole thing is just, there's just so much money being creamed off the top. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a disgrace, but we won't even go there. <laughs> right, that was some sort of yellow signal, but I can't remember which one. I think that was two yellows, wasn't it? I wasn't paying attention. Let's let's assume it was one. There we go. One yellow up there. Okay, guys. Right. Locomotive location livery. Because I went off on a bit of a rant, which I must try not to do. Um, a to Z by local bus. You are the third number on my screen. Let's play locomotive livery location. And you would like number 13. What are you thinking, guys? I think we're quite unanimous in the 777. Any ideas on a potential location? So, red ahead. Everyone's going for that 777. Any ideas on the location, guys? Any ideas on the location? So no more than 20 mile an hour over the AWS magnet there. And we want to stop approximately one coach length away from the signal. But we want to be able to see the signal um, ID number as well. And we're going to go brake step free. DRA and into neutral, not off. Whilst we wait at the red. Let's have another go. Let's play locomotive livery location. Tango 435 at Brighton is indeed. Aston Martin found a place in Liverpool with trees. Uh, Daryl Henry, Debra, do you need to undergo a medical in your job? Yeah, absolutely, Daniel. A medical when you start and then a medical every free. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, guys. Sorry, you missed it. The 377 had the doors open as it was moving. Straight up. I can't believe we missed that. Let's play <laughs> locomotive livery location. Right, we all want number seven. Let's give you number seven. What are we thinking, guys? What are we thinking? We're still sitting at a red light, so I'll keep that up on the screen for a few more minutes. I'm going to give you some more boxes. Let me know when you've got that location. <laughs> I 
KO to Southport. Uh, Rowan777, somewhere in the UK. Joe, watch it. DET Trains knows where you live. Uh, it's out of service. Hey, Pavel Milena. Welcome to Deborah. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong there. Right, we've got the signal. One yellow, platform four. The red is the buffer stop. Into forward. Off we go. Uh, yeah, I'm the same, Jonathan. I'm not familiar with Mersey Road at all. I've, I've never been to Liverpool. There we are. Good for 20 going in. I'm sure it's 25 going into Brighton. It is 25 going into Brighton. I knew that. I knew that. Uh, knife by a kangaroo. Yeah, if you're driving in snow, there are, there are sort of extra modules of the rule book and stuff like that that you have to follow if you're driving in snow. Normally, sort of rain and wet weather like that, unless they enforce like um, blanket speed restrictions, then you're you're just driving at your normal speed. Uh, I, Lukey, the DRA prevents you from taking traction power. So if the DRA is set, basically the I, the train won't move. I can't move the train. It will still roll if you release the brakes, but you can't take traction power. Um, and the purpose of that is called the driver reminder appliance. You set it when you're stopped at a red signal. Um, there's a few other occasions you set it as well. Basically, it's to remind you that you are at a red signal or that your next signal is red. Um, it's, it's, it's a very simple device, but it is quite effective. And we're coming down onto the buffer stops. 15 unmarked points. I believe in the sectional appendix, though, just the one, two. I believe they're all listed as 25 at, or 20 at Brighton. I don't think they're 15 at Brighton. Um... There are a couple of places now, I think, like London Bridge, and it's, it's a local instruction in the sectional appendix, that if the points are unlisted, then line speed applies. So it's a, yeah, a bit of a weird one. Okay, full service, DRA on, into neutral. 12 cars on the buffer stops. We are platform on the right. Press all the buttons. It'll open eventually. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Beautiful 313 over there as well. Are we on time? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hey, Pure Lemon, good evening. We are just about to finish up, bud, but good evening all the same. Come on, we're waiting for a score. We're waiting for a score. Oh, we got silver on that one. Okay, so, we were due at Gatwick Airport at 9.41. We actually arrived at 9.41, and our stop accuracy was 0.553 yards. We were due at Brighton at 10.07. We actually arrived at 10.06, and we only got a silver medal for it. I mean, I suppose a little bit of speeding, which probably doesn't help, really, does it? But, yeah, it must have been the speeding. Must have been the speeding. Never mind, never mind. Okay, guys. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. We're going to do a reveal on this. Thank you, the Mersey Rail 508120, uh, for sending this one in. If you want to send me any pictures for Locomotive Location Livery, guys, please do send them via my Discord server. Send them as a direct message to me. Dis um, invitation link in the description below. Um, or you can send them to me via my social media channels. Um, don't worry if I don't reply to you because I do get quite a few sent through, but I will use them um, eventually. So, <laughs> that's about all I can tell you. Um, 
so let's have a reveal on this one. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. So that was a Merseyrail 777 at Bootle, Bootel Oriel Road. Is that how you say it? Hey, Pure Lemon, look, you've just put it in the chat. Pure Lemon, go, oh, come on, come on. Pure Lemon, Pure Lemon. I mean... Is that, is that even working? There we go. Pure Lemon. Congratulations, bud. Excellent. You got, you got it in the chat just there. Merseyrail 777 at Bootle Oriel Road or something like that. Whatever it's called. <laughs> So there we go, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. It is great to be back streaming. Um, if you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. It is Dad Rail Fest, my son's name, not mine, uh, all this week. So tomorrow we're going to be on the Birmingham Cross City line at the usual time of half eight. And throughout the week, we're going to be doing various streams, uh, including SCR on um, Roblox. We're going to be doing GCR. And we're going to be doing Great British Railways as well. Uh, be doing a little bit of Train Sim Classic throughout the week. And there's a 375 video thing that I need to give a go as well. So there's going to be a lot happening this week. There's also going to be a train driver vlog. No, train driver rules video will be coming out this week as well, before the end of the week. So a lot happening this week. Stick around, like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on my social media channels if you don't already and join the Discord server. been absolutely great to have you here. Uh, British Ace, it's fake. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing some building work at the moment. That's all the mess behind me. It's fake. It's not a real one. But there we go. Thank you very, very, very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to press that button there, which should start the end music. It's been great to have you here. And I hope to see you on another stream very, very soon. Maybe even tomorrow. Thanks for watching.